Hi, I'm a YouTuber and a YouTube video editor who has gathered over 600,000 views and became monetized all in one year. And I'm about to teach you how you could do the same with one video all in the next five minutes. So, if you're just starting out as a YouTuber, then you first need to know the basics. This may shock you, but there's only three things that you need to remember. With the last one being something which many people probably don't know. Starting with the first one, click-through rate. This is arguably one of the most important factors that contribute to a video's success, so make sure you're listening. In order to make people click on the video, the thumbnail doesn't necessarily need to be bright and insanely saturated, but instead it needs to get the point of the video across in a way that grabs the audience's attention. There isn't an exact number to hit in terms of click-through rate in order for a video to be successful, as of course, if the video has been shown to more people and has more impressions, the CTR will be lower. But for a quick reference, out of 490 million impressions, Mr. Beast manages to get about 7.3% of people to click his thumbnails. And speaking of which, let's go to one of his latest videos and see what makes his thumbnails so clear. Clickable. Now this is the thumbnail that we'll be looking at first. Firstly, his face is directly centered in the middle of the thumbnail, with a very exaggerated expression. Not only does it show the audience that it's a Mr. Beast video, but it also shows the emotion that the thumbnail has. Also, this thumbnail is slightly different to his rest. If you haven't noticed, there's a vignette of blackness around the thumbnail. This grabs the audience's attention because it's just different to his other thumbnails, and it also contrasts well with the background. So, what do we need to remember? A good thumbnail needs either emotion or some sort of brief story to it that complements the title well. You also need to make it pop with colours that complement each other well, but not so much that it makes me want to collapse right there and then. And moving on to our next point, average view percentage. Although it may not be as important as the last point, average view percentage is the percentage of the video that the audience watch, and depending on the length of the video, it can be very important when it comes to whether a video will do well or not. You can find a graph for this in the YouTube studio, and what you're going to want to be aiming for is around 70-75% to 75 retention. That means that by the end of the video, roughly 60-70% or 70 of the people are still watching. Now that is a lot of people, so you won't get there straight away. But Mr. Beast, one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, have said multiple times that he tries to aim for about 75% retention. If you manage to achieve this, however, then the graph should have a flat line with no real dips. But you're probably thinking, how do I actually achieve this? Well, in order to keep the audience watching, you'll first need to make them hooked and actually want to watch the video, just like any type of modern media. I'll go into more depth in a future video about this, but here are the basics. You'll first need a story element, or at least a reason for the audience to watch the video until the end. This means that the video should have a beginning or an intro, a middle, and an ending, or a payoff point that the audience has been anticipating throughout the video. One good way that I like to increase the payoff is by continuously mentioning what will happen at the end, or the challenge that needs to be completed, or a secret that has been kept from the viewer for the entire duration of the video. This will keep the stakes in the audience's mind and will make them more likely to watch until the end and not click off. An extremely good example of this is Logan Paul's I Bought the World's Most Expensive Pokemon Card. Now, if you're looking for an example of how anticipation, build-up, suspense, and payoff look, then this is the best one. The audience is immediately introduced to the stakes and how hard it will be for Logan to get his hands on the most expensive Pokemon card. And time and time again, the audience is filled with doubt and the feeling that this would never be possible. This keeps happening right up until the payoff point, where, well, there isn't really much editing at all. And this is because the weight of the situation allows the edit to just play normally, so the audience can admire what's actually happening. Oh my god, bro. <sighs> And this leads me on to my next point, which is a massive misconception I see among aspiring YouTubers, which is that the video needs to be insanely over-edited with a cut every half a millisecond. No. That may have been the case a few years ago, but now people are just getting bored of it. Of course, you don't want a boring video that seems slow, but also, please do not end up like Matthew Beam. You want a happy medium that makes your content digestible and enjoyable for the audience to watch. And speaking of editing, I'd highly recommend either Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. If you are worried about spending some money, then I'll definitely say you go for Premiere Pro as it's the more professional and advanced of the two. However, if you're on a budget, then I would go for DaVinci Resolve, as it's completely free and pretty much has the same capabilities as any of the advanced softwares out there. But moving on to the final point, watch time. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's the amount of time that someone watches your video for. Now, this is vital for a video success, because at the end of the day, the reason that YouTube pushes videos out in the first place is so that you can stay on their platform for longer. And they could make more money. This is the same with every social media, business, and company. They're all competing for your attention, and with you making a YouTube video, so are you. So with that being said, if you want a good amount of watch time, you need to balance the length of your video out with the watchability of your video. This is why channels such as The Sidemen, Beta Squad, and even KSI Second Channel do so well. They have a well-edited, engaging video that makes you want to give them 30 minutes to an hour of your time. Now this amount of time is getting more difficult to demand from someone with the rise of TikTok and YouTube Shorts, so I would 
wouldn't recommend going on making an hour-long documentary, as these channels like the Sidemen and Beta Squad are heavily rely on their personality of the creators. But if a video is anywhere from 8 to 12 minutes long and has a good average view percentage, then you should be more than sorted with the watch time that you will receive. And with that, that's everything you need to know in order to make a viral video. And I even use some of the tips in this video here because this is a brand new channel. So if you want to see how well this video can do, then make sure to subscribe.